Hello friends! Today I'd like to talk about robotic arm calibration. Calibrating a robotic arm is essential for achieving accurate and reliable movements. Robotic arms have complex kinematic models that define the relationship between joint angles and end effector position orientation. Calibration allows you to refine and fine-tune the parameters of the kinematic model, ensuring that it accurately represents the arm's physical behavior. Calibrating a robotic arm can be a complex task, often requiring specialized tools and costly sensors. In this video I'll try to design my own low-cost setup for do-it-yourself robotic arm calibration. First I'll try it on simulator and then on a real robot. Alright, let's dive in. But first I'd like to thank my patrons Anthony and Devrim Yasa. Thank you so much for your support. If you like my content, you can support my channel financially. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press like button. The purpose of calibration procedure is to properly define kinematic parameters of the robotic arm. There are many ways these kinematic parameters can be specified. Kinematic model of robotic arm is basically the sequence of translations and rotations of reference frame, knowing which we can define position and orientation of robots and effector. A commonly used convention for selecting frames of reference in robotic applications is the denavid hartenberg convention. So I'm going to use DH convention to attach reference frames to my first I'll define base frame like so. Next frame is defined by first translating along previous Z axis by the D parameter. D parameter represents the distance between frame I and frame I plus 1 along frames I Z axis. Next we rotate current frame along previous Z axis by the V angle. V angle is another parameter in DH convention. After rotating by V angle, previous X axis gets aligned with the next frame's X axis. New frame's X axis should represent the common normal between ZI and Z type mean minus 1. In case of my robot, all the joints axes are either parallel or perpendicular, so X axis of the new frame cannot be uniquely defined. Next portion of transformations of frame 0 to frame 1 will happen along new X axis. We have no translation along X1 axis since there's no shift between Z0 and Z1, so A1 parameter will be 0. But we need to rotate new frame along new X axis so that new Z1 axis got aligned with joints 2 axis of rotation. According to DH convention, frames IZ axis should be aligned with joints I plus 1 axis of rotation. And that's the last fourth parameter in DH convection angle alpha. Alpha parameter defines angle of rotation of frame I along XI axis so that that I axis got aligned with axis of rotation of joint I plus 1. So now we fully defined frame 1. And we proceed in the similar manner. First translate along the Z1, then rotate around Z1, translate along new X axis, and since the 2 axis is already in correct orientation, alpha 2 equals 0 and so with the rest of the frames. The last frame can be placed arbitrarily. Values of all these parameters I took from the CAD model of my robot. But in reality, of course, they will be somewhat different. And we need to somehow obtain these real-world values to accurately position the robotic arm. So how to calibrate robotic arm? First we need to collect a bunch of measurements of real-world positions and orientations of robotic arms and effector at different joints configuration. Then we need to get position and orientation error based on difference in posture calculated using current kinematic parameters and the posture obtained from the measurements. And finally we need to recalculate DH parameters to minimize this error. To calculate robot's position and orientation, I'm going to use depth camera attached to the end effector. For this calculation to be accurate, we first need to properly calibrate the camera. And then, knowing camera intrinsic parameters, we can easily calculate 3D coordinates of chessboard corners in camera frames. And from that we can obtain robot's end effector position and orientation. To calibrate the camera, it is necessary to collect some images of chessboard pattern. So here you can see robotic arm is moving from one position to another and collecting reference images, images along the way. You can find an example of how to calibrate camera on OpenCV tutorial page. The only thing I want to notice is that it is necessary to collect enough images so that the projection error was as close to zero as possible. Some images lead to increase in reprojection error and you need to remove such images from collection. And in order to obtain accurate camera intrinsics, you need to add more images as long as the projection error goes down. 
In my case I collected more than 20 images and received a projection error of 0.04 in units of pixels. Here you can see all the images collected during camera calibration with chessboard corners marked on them. Having received camera metrics and distortion coefficients as a result of camera calibration procedure, we can use OpenCV's solve pin P function to obtain rotation and translation vectors of chessboard corners in camera frame. But from my experience, this function in this form gives not very accurate results. So, to properly calculate chessboard corners transform in camera frame, I first extract, extract 3D coordinates of these two vectors. How to do that? Knowing RGB camera intrinsics and having depth information from depth camera, we can easily find 3D coordinates of any image points like so. Where CX and CY are principal point coordinates and FX and FY are focal lengths, which values we can receive from camera matrix. And knowing 3D coordinates of any two points, we can easily calculate 3D vector pathing through them. These two vectors actually represent X and Y axis of object reference frame expressed in camera frame. We can also obtain that axis by taking cross product. So now we have chessboard pattern reference frame expressed in camera frame and from that we can obtain, obtain Euler angles. Also we have translation vector. That's basically what we need. But we can obtain more accurate result if we pass these values as initial guess to solve PNP function like so. Knowing 3D coordinates of low left corner of chessboard pattern, we can easily calculate robots and effect a position. That's how I'm going to collect real-world positions and orientation of robots and defector. What about positions and orientations calculated using our current DH parameter? For this I'm going to use Robotics Toolbox for Python. This is great library that gives convenient tools for representing the kinematics and dynamics of serial link manipulators. We easily define robot using our DH parameters like so. And we should pass list of joints with appropriate DH parameters to constructor. Null parameters can be omitted. Next we can visualize kinematic model of our robot. This is true kinematic model of the robot. For calibration I'm going to define another DH robot with DH parameters deviating from the real ones. Here you can see robot in its zero position. Let's visualize robot in another position. And we can calculate robot's posture in this configuration like so. This is translation path. And this is orientation in terms of Euler angles. Alright, having defined real position and nominal calculated with forward kinematic function. We can calculate position error like so. What about orientation error? That's a little bit trickier. First we need to define the real robot's orientation and nominal orientation in terms of unit quaternions, where V and S are vector and scalar parts respectively. And orientation error can be defined as follows. And that's it. Now, in order to update our nominal DH parameters based on the error, we need to find out how robot's position and orientation changes in response to changes in DH parameters. It looks like we need to define Jacobian. 
Indeed, standard Jacobian matrix in robotics describes how robots in defect opposition and orientation changes in response to changes in joints configuration. When multiplied with vector of joints velocities, it gives robots in defect translational and rotational velocities. Now we need to define Jacobian as if each dh parameter is a separate one degree of freedom joint. Such a Jacobian will have the dimension of 6 by number of parameters to be calibrated. For example, let's look at joint 1. It has two parameters to be calibrated, d and alpha. D parameter acts like a prismatic joint. It will have no effect on end effector rotational velocity, but it will directly affect end effector's linear velocity. In this case, we can clearly see that d1 will move end effector along global z-axis. In general, to define contribution of any d-parameter to end effect the linear velocity, we need to get previous joints z-axis, expressed in global reference frame. For a parameter, like is the case with joint 2, we need to take current joints x-axis. For alpha angle, we will need x1 axis, that will be contribution of this parameter to end effect rotational velocity. And for translational velocity, we will need translation vector from current frame to end effector. And alpha's contribution to the translational velocity can be computed by taking cross product of frames 1 x axis and the translation vector from frame 1 and end effector. But where can we take all those axes and vectors? We can use fkine all function from robotics toolbox for Python library. It will return list of transformations of all frames expressed in base frame. This is how I did it in code. First, using fkine all function, we obtain list of transformations. Then I created placeholder for the resulting Jacobian. As you can see, my Jacobian will have dimension of 6 by 11. I will calibrate links lengths which are specified by D and A parameters, and also alpha angles. V angles or offsets don't need to be calibrated since they are varying parameters in case of revolute joints. Next, I extract and effect a translation vector. This is D1's contribution to Jacobian. As you can see, it's frame 0 of z-axis. And I place this contribution in appropriate column in Jacobian. Then I calculate translation vector from frame 1 to the last frame like so. And contribution of alpha 1 to end effectors linear velocity is cross product between r1 and x1. Alpha 1 also directly affects robots orientation along x1 axis expressed in base frame. And that's basically it. I repeat this process for all other parameters as if they are separate joints. As you can see Jacobian is configuration dependent. We need to recalculate it for each robot joints configuration. Alright, what's next? We have robot's position and orientation error, we have our parameters Jacobian. And we have this formula stating that changes in robot's position and orientation equals Jacobian's times changes in robot's configuration. So we need these changes in parameters, and in order to obtain them we need to invert Jacobian, like so. How will we do this in practice? In practice we will need n observations from which we will get n times 6 error vector. At each observation we will compute Jacobian, and we will stack these Jacobians into one big matrix of dimension of 6 by n by number of parameters. And then we will compute our parameter update vector like so. Now we can update parameters. This algorithm is iterative. At each iteration, you need to compute position and orientation error. Compute Jacobian based on values of current parameters. Update those parameters. And then repeat until convergence. That's how I implemented calibration procedure in my Unreal Engine simulator. I'm going to try it on a real robot when it will be ready. Here you can see robot doing test moves and collecting observations. And here you can see the results. This is reprojection error after camera calibration. This is my DH parameters before robot calibration. And this is position and orientation error norm after before calibration. And here you can see updated parameters after calibration. They are pretty close to the real ones. And this is average error after calibration. As you can see it reduced by almost factor of 100. And that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and press like if you like my video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.